well you join me in France which is really exciting so we are on another of our Euro trips this one's going to be slightly different um, so we're going to start in France and then we'll see where the wind takes us but it's even more different because of the amazing beasts that we've got with us look behind me do you mean me? <laughs> Yes, we're in the Grand California. It's not ours. It's uh, yeah, VW's. Not. In fact, it's the one that many of you have probably climbed through in the NEC. Yeah. But yeah, we're in Northern France. We've got a bit of an issue though, haven't we? Yes. These are pre-production models, so there's a few things that needed tweaking and stuff. And unfortunately for us, the water pump in the habitation area has failed. So We were warned about this by, by VW. Don't think that if you buy one, they're all gonna have broken water pumps. That's not the case. Like I say, it's pre-production. So we were, told, yeah, we were told this was gonna happen. The good thing is that because it's VW, there are tons of VW dealerships around. So we're hoping... Yeah, we're hoping to... To get it fixed today. And also the water pump is just a standard water pump that all motorhomes use. So we might just pop to a motorhome dealership first, just to even get it fixed there but um, if not then we'll have to go to a VW dealership but oh and also I'm sure you're all worried oh yeah because you probably think oh they've done it without Bentley again have we look who's here look who's here <laughs> I am here <laughs> we want to escape you don't need to escape right let's get packed up yep let's get going I should mention that the air that we found is about an hour from Calais, so when you come off the Euro Tunnel and then drive south, but it was free at this time of year. I think usually it's eight euros for 24 hours. It's well right. worth it. Oh, you well can, worth you it. You can walk to the beach. Yeah. We'll put some footage in because it's a crazy place. It's really interesting, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, definitely. The beach was fascinating last night. <laughs> a storm has just howled its way through what do you think of that it's blooming awful out there lizzie's just popped into the supermarket i don't know if you can hear me over this storm <laughs> it's hailing it's unbelievable hopefully it should just pass through yeah it looks a bit brighter behind but we um <laughs> we've if you can hear me, this is. We went to a like motorhome dealership to see if we could get the pump repaired. Their repair workshop area wasn't open today. It's open again on Monday. It is a Saturday today. But they had a little accessories store and they had pumps for sale in there. So I thought, well, I can replace a pump. That's not difficult at all. I came back out to the um, California to take the pump out to have a look at what it was so I can get replacement, a like for like replacement. Took it out um, and I'd done all this last night. I had taken it out of the the uh, actual water tank to see if um, I could get it working outside the water tank and it wasn't working. Anyway, I took it out today and it works. So, <laughs> God, God, I mean, it's great that it works, but God knows what was wrong with it um, yesterday. Anyway, I still bought replacement just in case it packs up again and um, yeah, hopefully I won't have to fit it, but we have water again now, it's back working. Not that we need any water, looking at the amount of water that's falling from the sky, but at least it works. These things happen, it's all part of the adventure. I 
wish to be I wish to be me oh, It's freezing It is not very warm Ah Mind your nose. It's nice and warm in here though. <laughs> it sure I is. I should say the gas heater is fantastic. Compared to like the diesel heater, you don't get any of the diesel-y smell. And I don't know, it just feels like it stays warmer. Mm. A bit more consistent, isn't it? I think because yes. the diesel one kicks in and out a bit more, I yeah. don't know. It's been a bit of an adventure today with um, trying to get the pump repaired, which just miraculously fixed itself anyway. Yeah, we've done a couple, probably a couple of hundred miles today. We're not far from Le Mans, so yeah, slowly working our way back down. We had to take a bit of a diversion because I needed to go to that motorhome repair place. So we're now trying to, if we wanted to just shoot south through France, it would have taken us via Paris, but I wanted to avoid Paris because it can be so busy. Uh, so we've come back across to um, the coast, sort of, well, heading towards the coast of France and down that side. But we're trying to chase some weather, really. Um, yeah, we want some sun, don't we, Bentley? So, um, just <laughs> he's just staring at me. It's quite funny. Can you see him, man? <laughs> I'm not laughing at you. You, you don't look at the um, you don't look at the camera, but you look at me looking at the camera. Why are you not looking at the camera now? Look at the camera. Look at Daddy. What's this? Thank you. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So we are um, we're trying to chase some sun. It looks like this we're on like the tail end of the storm that's hit in the uk over these past couple of days and um it's just wet and extremely windy throughout the whole of france pretty much so originally we we're going to go down towards portugal but we're actually going to i think we're probably going to end up going more towards the eastern coast of spain instead first and then back up around portugal that way maybe just because uh, we're just trying to chase some sun and it looks like Portugal's getting a bit of that rain as well so I'm sure by the time we get back round to Portugal it'll be sunnier but we shall see that's the beauty of um, traveling in a camper van we can just swap and change if we want to so we'll spend the evening here another freebie air which is very nice and I've managed to get a token for the water and the, uh, the electricity not that we'll use the electricity but yeah we shall top it with water later on Well, you should be able to recognize this van by the huge sign on the side of it but we've bumped into our great friends Theo and B from the Indie Projects and we've been hanging out with them last night we were hanging out with them in the Grand California it was so nice to see them and they've got an epic trip planned for two years so I'm gonna have a chat to them about what they've got planned and and see where they're planning to go but we're really excited to see them again because they've been such good friends of ours and uh, yeah it's really nice to hang out We are like we are super stoked that we could see you though because yeah. like it's 
It seems like it's been so long. I think I saw you guys more recently because I got a text. I got a text from them saying that they were at the Greggs at the end of my oh, road, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they just got off the ferry, and so they decided to. And they were like, "Aren't we really close to you?" And I was like, "You're literally like five seconds away from me." Sean's at work, so I'll get you guys to come over. So you guys came over and brought the van, and I saw it done up then. But, but we didn't see Sean. Finished. Did we? No, no. Well, you're not missing out. <laughs> <laughs> you saw me and Bentley. That's enough. But um, yeah, that was the last time. You guys were on your way to, uh, I think you were going to film Win the Wilderness, weren't yeah, you? So yeah. that was a bit we crazy. So, um, and that was quite exciting to know what you guys were getting up to. Because all we knew was they were going on a TV programme. We were like, oh yeah, we'll see how this goes. But now you've got an even better trip planned, haven't you? Yeah, Exactly. Canada. We are off to Canada. That'll be amazing. That's my, yeah. uh, my birthplace. Exactly. Well, not my birthplace. That was like High Wycombe. <laughs> <laughs> I am actually half Canadian because my mum's Canadian, so I can't wait That's to see so that. That's so cool. Yeah. No, I've, we've never been. We've been to the States so many times, yeah. haven't we? Yeah. But millions. for some reason, we've never been to Canada. No. And we're just so excited to get there oh. and explore because I can't wait to see it. the you things that we've van? seen. I know. Yeah, you know so they're, they're taking their van with them as well. And Gingy Bear yeah, is coming. going to be coming. Mm -hmm. And she's going to be flying with you in the plane as well, isn't yeah. she? Which is going to be really funny. I, I, think hope you, I really hope you film that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, we'll film everything. <laughs> I think she's more excited than we are, to be honest. Yeah. But no, I'm really, I'm really excited for you guys. I think the trip's going to be amazing. It should be good. Yeah, yeah, we've, just, we've just got all the boring stuff to do yeah, now. Back yeah, in the UK. yeah, visas all and the stuff. The visas we're and excited then. to see your trip down south. As oh, well I, in the I, it's funny because you guys are heading to where it's freezing, and I can't <laughs> wait to get to where it's really hot. We've literally had a week of like twenty to twenty-four degrees <laughs> oh, I can't wait. every day, and that's what you're in for. <laughs> I know. And we're going back to snow. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it was like, it was so the, the guy who delivered the Grand California to our um, to our house, the whole front of the bonnet was covered oh, in really? ice. Yeah. yeah. And I was, and it wasn't snowing where we were, it was like really sunny. So I was like <laughs> he said I've just come off the M twenty five. It's like I can't even believe that you've been through the snow though, it's just unreal. So I've been messaging people in Newfoundland. Yeah. And they're like, We've just had eight feet of snow, so I'm not sure how it's gonna be when you arrive and we're just like, oh, at least we got good tires yeah. and we've like we're prepared for it from Norway. Do you think we should invite Sean in? Yes, definitely. To, to come and say hello. <laughs> He's not seen the van, has he? He's got matching hats. You guys have got matching hats. Hello. Oh, I was just saying, I don't think I've ever been in here. No, no you haven't. That looks amazing. You've got a matching hat to Theo as well. I know, well, you have to. Like, you think they're going around travelling, seeing the sights. They're actually just a mobile market. <laughs> they, they just. <laughs> Uh, as soon as they turned up, they're like, two for a pound, two for a pound. <laughs> so I yeah. think the last time so we I saw to. the van, it was just full of stuff because we were moving everything to Portugal, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, it was like a last minute dash to get everything sorted before you went. And yeah, it looks amazing. Yeah, that tip -top thing. Unfortunately, we've got to say goodbye to Theo and B now and we're not going to see them for like two years. And look at them. <laughs> <laughs> It was good, I was impressed. Oh, I don't know this twistiness. <laughs> this is to help. Well, it is freezing and it is pouring with rain, so we're definitely going to head south now and try and get somewhere to sunny. We just said goodbye to Theo and B from the Indie Projects and Gingy. We're gutted that we're not going to see them for a couple of years, but we're so excited for the trip. So check their channel out because that trip is going to be absolutely incredible. So worth watching, but we're really, really going to miss them. So I'm just trying to find uh, somewhere to stay for tonight. So I, can, <laughs> I can see the camera shaking because you're so cold. My hands are shaking. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell, but yeah, it's proper cold. So yeah. But yeah. Really so, nice rain. To see, so nice to see Theo. Uh, I'm great. gonna miss them so much. I mean we speak to them every day anyway, but yeah, we're gonna really miss them. So I hope you guys have an amazing trip, incredible, and we can't wait to watch the videos. Well it's another travel day today. We've just stopped at an air. Um, we're heading down towards Bordeaux. I don't think we're gonna get as far as Bordeaux today. Uh, we're a, bit, a little bit late leaving just because we were spending time with the indie projects this morning. Uh, it's miserable, it's wet and windy. What's he doing? He's getting excited. Boring. He's happy. He's happy because we stopped. But yeah, it's a bit of a boring day, wet and windy. Um, it's been really windy actually today, so fighting the van a bit as we go down the, uh, the auto routes. But yeah. We're getting there. We've just stopped at an air because these are fantastic to give Bentley a little run around, be a quick break, and then we'll be on our way. Well, we 
made it to yet another air, which is completely empty. There's no one here apart from us, I'm sure you can see. Uh, so we've got uh, the best pitch and we've um, got a token. So we've put a token in the electric machine and uh, we're getting 12 hours for one token. The token costs two euros, so that's pretty damn good actually. Uh, that'll just charge it up. I know we've done lots of driving, but it doesn't never charge it quite as well as uh, plugging it into the actual mains. So that'll help, won't it? Yes. Happy? I am happy. No, this is great. I can't believe the airs that we're finding. Yeah, so far we've not paid for a night. I know we've only done a couple of nights, but that's pretty bit, good. I mean, we, we tend to stay in campsites, don't we, when we've got the Cali, or as yeah. much as possible we stay in campsites. We might occasionally have the one night away, but this is the third night that we've been in an air, and it's been yeah. brilliant. Yeah, we just need to... No. Bentley's stealing stuff. Bentley, leave that. No. No. Leave, no. Come here. Very obedient, look. Oh, he did actually stop. Good boy. Good boy. You get a treat for that, don't you? We did also get a token so that we could fill up the water. Again, it's two euros for a token, and that gives you like 100 litres of water. No. He's still messing around. Um, it gives you 100 litres of water, but I've not got the correct hose attachment. I need like a screw attachment that will then clip into my hose. So uh, maybe tomorrow we'll go via a DIY store and we'll pick up like one of those yeah, little screw attachments so that we can actually get some water on board. What I love about these French airs that are just dotted all over the country and free most of the time is that they're right in the heart of French villages. So you just get to see the local kind of culture and it's just absolutely stunning. This, our air that we're in now is right next to this incredible town hall. It's closed at the minute, unfortunately, but yeah, it's just, it's just such a nice setting. What do you think? It's really pretty, isn't it? I feel like I have to whisper. I know. It's just, fun. just don't say anything. Hang on. And if you turn around, you should be able to see our van just over the wall. Ding. Did you count correctly? What time is it? Six o'clock. But it also means that we're always going to know what time it is here. <laughs> What's cooking? Doing pizzas in the Ridge Monkey. Lizzie bought these pizzas from Aldi. Three cheese pizzas, only little ones. And we kind of fold them over into a calzone. See that? And so we just, yeah, just on a really low heat, just keep flipping it. I say that like, like it's Master Chef. <laughs> it's just warming pizzas up. It's Sunday today, and uh, a lot, the vast majority of places in France are closed, unlike the UK where we, uh, most places are open. We managed to get to Aldi just before half 12 when it when it was well, yeah, about quarter past 12, just before it shut. And it was a bit of a mad dash, wasn't it? But we managed to get something it'll do for dinner. Melted cheese. I bet a lot of people are wondering what a Ridge Monkey is, Sean. Oh yeah, so Ridge Monkey is a pan that is like double sided and it opens up um, you can also detach them so that it's two separate pans but it kind of because you keep it closed it kind of acts like a, a mini oven a lot of camper vans don't have ovens on on board because they draw a lot of power they just have grills uh, as grills or I mean you can do a pizza with a grill obviously or hobs this doesn't have a grill on it a lot of them don't even have grills but um, a Ridge Monkey kind of acts like an oven and allows you to uh, do things like pizzas that you wouldn't normally be able to do very well on the on and a garlic hop. bread and garlic bread garlic bread is amazing in a ridge monkey yes it is and we've even uh, lizzie's done previous videos of like baking cookies and things like that so pretty impressive 
How is it? Really good. And as usual, it's really crispy. Oh, it looks nice and hot. Roach Monkey's brilliant. We'll put a link in the description to them, but definitely get one. If you haven't got an oven, but you want to cook this sort of thing in a van, it's the way forward. Why are you not using the table? We've stored the table in the garage. It would normally be stored, I think, on the bed whilst you're traveling, because it's got some straps for it, but obviously our bedding is there. So we've put it in the garage area. Um, I think it would be nice to see a sliding one, like in the California yeah, ocean. It could fit on that rail yeah. and slide back. But they haven't done that, or they can't fit it there for some reason, so it is what it is. You can get the table out if you want it, but I mean, I'm happy eating off my lap, to be honest. Yeah. And there's plenty of kitchen space for you to cook still, so it's not necessary for it, so I don't feel like I'm missing out. Um, you could get it out if you needed to, but anyway, stop talking to me so I can eat. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> mm. So today's plan, um, because the water pump unfortunately went again last night, um, we think it's actually an electrical fault and like I say, again this is a pre-production model so we were warned that there might be a few things that could go wrong occasionally. Um, unfortunately these things happen sometimes with the press um, models but I can assure you VW are literally doing everything in their power to try and get us um, sorted with this one. Um, they've even offered to drive us out another van so I'm telling you they will do anything in their power to get this sorted but I think what's going to happen is we're going to drive to because we've changed the pump over now Sean changed the pump over earlier for the spare one that we had and unfortunately that hasn't fixed the problem so what we're going to do is we're going to drive to a VW dealership somewhere on our route ahead of us we have loads of water so we've got jerry cans and things like that we're not really that worried because obviously we haven't had a shower in things with our California Ration um, we just love the size of the bed in this so we don't really want to get rid of this van and swap to a different one um, so we, we're determined to keep this van even if the pump doesn't work and so what we're going to do is we're going to drive to a VW commercial dealership somewhere ahead of us I think what they're going to do is they're just going to plug it into the system and uh, reboot the electrical system and see if that fixes it um, otherwise there's a few other options that we can do that hopefully should fix it as well so that is the current plan uh, thankfully it's raining here so we're not missing out on much and it is just another travel day so fingers crossed we'll get it sorted today we've just stopped at probably their equivalent of B&Q uh, it was massive but I managed to get a hose attachment which has got uh, a couple of different sizes of screw on attachment so hopefully this should work we've just done a, about 10 minutes drive down the road uh, towards the destination that we're well the direction that we're heading and we've pulled into an air that uh, I think has some free water there's a Heimer at the minute just filling it with water which we absolutely love those classic Heimers and uh, yeah we should hopefully get fully topped up with water now This is what I bought because there's a couple of different sizes of screw thread in um, in Europe and this is like a two-in-one thing I'm sure plenty of people have seen these already you got that size and then you got the bigger size as well it's like the last air we were at had the bigger size but this one's the smaller one so at least you have both there and then that just screws on there and this is a um, free water point This end obviously goes in here. Now a lot of people thought that this point here was the electrical point and you couldn't open the door if it was plugged in, but that's incorrect. It's the water point that's there and the door will open into it if you open the door far enough, but obviously just don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that might happen. <laughs> it's a lively one. <laughs> so you might have to hold that. Great. <laughs> Danger.
So I thought it's best to summarise what happened today. It was pretty full on. We had quite a bit of travelling. You saw us pick up that new hose attachment. So we managed to fill up with water, which was fine. But as Lizzie said, we, uh, we still couldn't get that pump working. Well, it failed again. It was working and then failed again. So we went to one of four VW dealerships that are going to be selling the Grand California. This is the issue that we've got. It'd be fine if it was a normal California. You could just pull into any VW commercial dealers and they could probably fix the parts because they all they know what's going on with them. But because this is so new, such a um, it's a pre-production model as well. Yeah, we just had a bit of a game. Anyway, we went to Bayonne. They managed to squeeze us in. It took quite a long time just to get us on the system. Uh, to be able to do any work because the address that this vehicle is registered to is Volkswagen um, which was a bit confusing anyway and then second to that it was a UK address and all their systems are, on, are in uh, French which was struggling for postcodes and things like that. The time getting us ready on the system took longer than the time that they actually spent with the vehicle it drew a massive crowd. People uh, were very, very intrigued to see it, which is quite cool. They'd never seen one before, so all the staff were coming to have a good look at it. It went into the, the workshop, and they had it for about probably 45 minutes, something like that. Had a good look at it, but they needed it for a lot longer to work out the fault. The pump is fine. You saw me replace the pump this morning, and the, it, it still didn't work. So the, the pump's not the issue. It's not getting a signal to it to tell it the pump to turn on so that's the issue so unfortunately we're gonna to have to continue the rest of the trip without a water pump we have stocked up on jerry cans we've got a little portable shower which so it's not ideal but we are used to this because obviously we have a, a normal california that doesn't have a shower so yeah onwards and upwards we are staying at a lovely location that we'll show you tomorrow right by a lake and then we're gonna start heading into spain tomorrow good night from us As you can see, I'm looking fresh faced, so that can only mean one thing. The pump worked again. It started working again last night. So it's obviously a temperamental fault, um, but I'm not gonna keep dwelling on that because I'm sure you're sick of hearing about the pump. So sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Anyway, Lizzie has also had a shower and she's now getting ready in her amazing, look how she's set this up. So she's got the mirror sat on the wall there. Thing is, I can I could do it in the bathroom, obviously, but then I don't get to sit down, and also it's wet from where we've had the showers. So I just balanced my mirror here, and I've got all my makeup, everything. It's so easy. It's a great little spot. I like this a lot. Get to look out the windows. It's brilliant. So this is our view out the side window. That's a lake right down there. As you can see, it is chucking it down still. Um, there you go. There's a lake and that, that's the end of the zip line that goes all the way across the lake. Funny enough it isn't open today, just in the summer. But uh, there's a little beach to the right there as well, so we're going to go and explore that with Bentley. Not joking, this is not a joke. So that's yet another country for Bentley then. It how, is. How many countries has he been in? Oh, um, eight or nine, something like that now. He's Impressive. been in a lot, he's, he's a well-traveled doggo. Mm. So he has to learn to bark in um, Spanish now, or yep. bork in Spanish, maybe that's how it is. But yeah, Spain's very pretty. The sun has come out a little bit. I'm yeah. kind of hoping it stays out. It's a very pretty town, look at this.
got an alpine feel to it, I think. Mm. I suppose we're, we're kind of in the Pyrenees here, so yeah, that's probably why. That must be why. That means they must have great Py Pyrenees dogs. I love them. They're like huge versions of Bentley, basically. But um, yeah, we're in Spain. Gracias. Oh, this is pretty. Buenos Aires. Oh, look. Be wearing a bubble hat but we've just seen it says it's 14 degrees on there zoom in <laughs> so we're heading to the sun yeah we're trying our hardest definitely keep heading south but yeah will it get higher than 14 that is a question it better do it better do i want to warm up Now this is a pretty cool air that we found. We spent a couple of hours driving, headed further south just to try and find some decent weather. It's 19 degrees here, so we are happy. Finally got a bit of sunshine, although it is dropping behind the mountains that are behind us, but hopefully tomorrow morning it should be a bit nicer as well. But yeah, the, these pictures are really cool. They've got the space for plenty of vehicles, but there's three, uh, I think there's three, yeah three hard standing pitches that are made of concrete, nice and level. And then they've got AstroTurf at the side as well, which is great. So you've, yeah, lovely and comfortable underfoot, which is nice and nice and level too. We're here with a couple of big, big uh, motomes. So they look very, very smart. I'm sure they're having a nice relaxing time in them. Uh, but I don't think we look too out of place with our awesome Grand California. Bentley's enjoying uh, being able to have the door open and being able to wander around as well, which is nice. We'll take a wander later on and see what we're, we're nearby. is I've been watching the massive birds of prey that are landing on like the cliff face um, yeah it's just crazy I'm also like trying to listen to where the dogs are coming from because I don't know if they're stray dogs or anything like that so I don't really want Bentley to be Bentley's also been after a few stray cats already <sighs> cats yeah just tormenting him I'm sure <laughs> Bentley leave that good boy what you like what you like so we're still looking at these birds of prey and obviously I don't know much about birds and I'm probably completely wrong but looking at the graffiti and things like that and the way they look to me they look like vultures and do you get them in central Spain? I'll have to Google it later, but... Oh, Bentley's like a vulture, looking at this cat, look. You're looking the, the wrong way, one. Bentley. You've seen the other one. He's looking the wrong way. He's There's one, the one right there. Oh, now he's... Oh, well, you might be able to see it behind me, but there's a massive dam here. Um, obviously holding water back uh, so that this area could have been colonised and... Uh, it's really interesting because it's really in the rocks. So obviously a, a riverbed has come through here at some point and really cut into the into the ground. And that's why there's so many caves up there as well. But then they've obviously built the town here as well. But it's really nice to be able to get up and actually see it. It's really interesting. We've got a fire going here. Come on, set a fire to the place. Got a slight fire going. Fire. Making sausage and mash. Yeah, I put too much butter in the mash though. Not butter, too much milk in the mash. Yeah, it's a bit of an elaborate thing going on here. I've got the ridge monkey with the sausages in. They're slightly on fire. With the kettle on top, boiling some water. I don't it won't quite boil, just sat on top like that. It won't get hot enough. Um, and then this has got mashed potato. 
you can get like um, packets of mashed potato, not like smash, but you know, like it's already made up. You're supposed to chuck it in the microwave, but you can also chuck it in the pan. So I've got that. And uh, it seems to be doing the trick actually. Yeah, I might have made it a bit too wet, but. Oh well, it'll still taste the same, I'm sure. It's a bit watery. Gosh. It'll do. It'll do. How's it taste? Mmm. Yeah, it tastes good. The mash actually tastes pretty good. Sausages are alright. Gravy's pretty thin. <laughs> it's all. All tastes good. He will like the mash in a bit. He gets very excited about mash. <laughs> he loves mash. Is that good, Bentley? What happened there? I dropped the camera and I'm still recovering because it costs a lot of money. <laughs> I really hope it still works. Is it, it cracked? No, it properly fell off the side. Let's have a look. No, it looks all right. That really scared me to death. Like, nothing scares me like dropping the camera. <sighs> <laughs> oh my God. Oh, it's good that we could laugh about it. Yeah, maybe. See you in a bit. Well, that's one way to wake up in the morning, dropping the camera. <laughs> I'm just glad it's still working. But we're just gonna go about 10 minutes up the road to a nice spot where we can walk Bentley, and then we're gonna continue onwards, heading to try and get some more of this glorious sunshine so we can actually get some vitamin D. We're just trying to get the gas sorted at the moment because um, we ran out of one of the bottles of gas so we changed that over. Uh, so we've obviously got one still but we want to make sure that we you know, don't run out again. Um, so <laughs> we're at a, a McRent place for caravans and motorhomes and about four members of staff have now been out having a look to see what sort of camping gas we can change over to. So once we have the answer, we'll pass it on to you guys and save you all the hassle as well. But it's quite funny the amount of times I've seen Sean come and go, but the staff here are really nice. Like they seem to be really um, genuinely trying to help us as best they can. So yeah, let's just hope this works out. So I don't know if Lizzie explained that we, oh, you got a bit of dirt on the lens, hang on. <laughs> We've had to buy a new regulator. We've got color gas fitted in this, um, which they don't sell in Europe at all, which we knew. Uh, I believe they do, well, I thought camping gas fits this, and but they weren't sure whether it did or not, but they don't sell camping gas anyway. And camping gas comes in tiny bottles, which is a bit rubbish. So we bought, this has a system where um, it has a changeover so you can swap it over so you've got two bottles and all you do is just turn it and swap it over but we're just replacing one side with the new newer system well not newer system but european whatever this is kepsa sepsa i don't know sound like a disease so i've had to replace the hose because it's got a different attachment 
and I've had to get a different regulator. You only have to do this once, obviously, and now we can run. We can put in these the description bottles. what it is as well. Yeah, once I work out what it is. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I just need to try and fit this. But these kind of press down on top. Don't blow up. Like that. Oh, that's easy. Which is quite good. Quite like that. That's quite clever. And I kind of because I need to. I think I'm going to have to do that before I put it in. I'm not entirely sure whether the brackets are going to be big enough to hold it. Okay, so this is the setup that we've got now. So we've got Cala gas on one side, and you can see the changeover switch that you just have to turn that bit there. You just turn that when you want to swap over. And we're just, rather than buying two different regulators, I just bought the one, and we can just swap over on that side. Which all seems good, but we do have to carry that and another one <laughs> so we've got a lot of gas on board ideally they should be um securing a different box but not much we can do about that you'll be fine So last night, we spent the night in the middle of a city, a place called Alcazar de San Juan, which we had never heard of before, but that's the beauty of a camper van. You just come across these kind of places that you wouldn't normally come to. It's so easy to go to the main places like Madrid, Barcelona, etc. And yeah, it's got that real Spanish city vibe, as it is a Spanish city, and just, yeah, I don't know, a real nice feeling about it. Last night we spent the night in a camper van, kind of, it's like an air but in the middle of the city um, and it was right next to a road and we thought mm, this might be a bit noisy but it, it was absolutely fine. It was really really quiet last night actually. It's got a water point, it's got a place to empty the loo so we'll do both of those things, fill, fill it with water and empty the loo and we'll take Bentley for a bit of a wander and uh, show you guys the sights of Alcazar de San Juan. we've noticed in Spain is there's an awful lot of um, nests of storks on top of like I don't know what they are chimney column type things but the storks are massive but again we don't really see this in the UK so it's an interesting thing for me to see inside the park just opposite the kind of camping car air and you can actually see the motomes right through there so really close which is really good like seeing all the scenery as you drive through all of these areas it's nice to be able to take it all in but yeah how do they farm that do you remember in italy northern italy when we saw those um all the apple trees oh yeah and they had real skinny tractors to drive in yeah it's quite cool they were really cool just arrived at this awesome location in amongst the olive trees there was olive trees all around there look and Lizzie's just doing a quick sort of five minute cleanup just because unfortunately some people leave the place in the right tip 
Can you leave that? Let's see. <laughs> but, yeah. Got my makeshift glove. Can't hurt, can it? Doing a bit of quick clean up? No, it doesn't, and it just makes it, you know, better for the locals. Yeah. Why? Why would you leave it in a mess? Do you know someone else who likes grated mozzarella? No, I've not got a clue. No? No. <coughs> no idea. I don't know anyone else. No. I mean, they're showing me. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, baby bear. <laughs> What's on the menu tonight? Stuffed pasta mm -hmm. with tomato sauce and a bit of cheese. Nice. It's a good staple for a van, actually. It's really quick and easy. Mm. Doesn't take much. much uh, doesn't take up much room. No, it's good. It's really good. Tasty as well. Really tasty and fills you up. Good hearty meal mm. in a beautiful sunset. Well, we left our wild camping spot last night and straight away we went over a, a very quite pretty dam, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, and then uh, like along this very well kept road, it's pretty weird around here. So that it? lake we were near um, must have been a reservoir for, for whatever reason. Um, and then, yeah, it drops right down and it's, yeah, it looks, looks quite old actually, but this is some grounds of some big stately home thing as well, which is, looks pretty run down, but. It's very interesting yeah. though, driving around these sorts of areas. What's happening? He's been rolling and there's all these tiny little yeah. spiky seeds. Can you see that? Yeah, I can, yeah. And he's absolutely covered. Look how many I've got out of him already. He likes to roll around. But he's also everywhere. very fluffy. The seeds think it's great because they can pollinate, move along. <laughs> <laughs> he's the ultimate sticky object. But we just spent a good like 15 minutes searching for this brush. Because I knew that we brought it, but we didn't know where we put it. And that's a uh, that tells you how big this fan is. This storage, <laughs> how long it took us to find this brush. <laughs> but it was in here. I knew it was. We have now arrived in La Ligna, which is right on the border between southernmost, well, one of the southernmost points of Spain and Gibraltar. Uh, so we were just gonna, because we had quite a long traveling day yesterday, we were just gonna chill out and relax, but we couldn't help ourselves. So we grabbed our passports and we headed across into Gibraltar. Gibraltar's really interesting because you have to cross the runway to get into the actual um, little town. It's only a couple of miles, a couple of square miles. So it's, it's a real small place, 
but we, we saw on Google Maps that there was Roy's Fish and Chips and we're, we're true Brits abroad. We had to race to uh, Roy's Fish and Chips, have some chips with curry sauce. Bentley enjoyed it too, and we had a quick wander around and then back across the uh, the airfield back here. But we're gonna explore a bit more today and uh, also tell you some a real key significance as to why we came to Gibraltar. Maybe the, the tomahawk, a whopping succulent and taste laden on the bone ribeye steak. It even says a real treat. It serves two, but that'd be good enough for you, won't it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. today but it's still lovely we have uh, just spent another night here in this amazing motorhome uh, kind of air right next to the marina in La Ligna right next door to Gibraltar we said yesterday that I was gonna let you know what the significance of Gibraltar is well 35 years ago my dad was posted here long story short I was born here in Gibraltar in the uh, Royal Naval Hospital there. I think things have changed quite a bit since back then the border was shut, you couldn't really get through. It was, um, yeah, very different to today where it's much more free flowing. We wanted to go and have a good look. I really wanted to show Lizzie. I went back, well, I left when I was two, so I don't remember anything about the first time I was here. My mum and dad took me back um, quite a few years later. Uh, so I have been before, I do remember bits about it. So Lizzie really wanted to have a look at the place because there's a huge significance there. Her dad, back in the 1970s, used to fly uh, Viscounts for Boac in and out of Gibraltar. So yeah, there's such a significance for all of us here at, uh, here at Gibraltar. So it was nice to bring Bentley so he could run across the, the runway and have a real good look at this quite unusual place it's uh yeah it's a bit crazy but we're getting packed up now we are heading further around the coast heading towards portugal and uh yeah this is the most subtly point we will be a really nice spot i highly recommend uh staying at this kind of campsite 12 euros 50 for 24 hours so we stayed for two days not bad at all very very nice Just arrived at this next air, a bit further along the coast, about an hour and a half from Gibraltar, right by this marina. And we've just shown you how this works. So some of these, you stop the other side of the barrier. They won't let you in until you've paid. 
So this particular one, the screen was all blank, just clicked it and you pick your parking space. So we're gonna go and have a look at what parking space we want. And then you can also, you see here you can pay for a top up of water or electric. And yeah, you can even check, obviously check your status, which is probably by putting your, yeah, you put your details in and all this kind of stuff. So let's go and pick the uh, space. I think we're gonna get electric because we've not, we've not plugged it in since um, well, France wasn't it? I think so. Yeah, sometime in France. So, yeah, it's, we've only plugged it in once for 12 hours, and that's it. So, it does need a good top up. So, I think we're going to be a bit limited to these spaces, really. So, we do have to be registered. So, Lizzie's just gone to get the passport. So, you can't use it until you've actually registered your details. So, Lizzie has registered for one day. Payment done. Hopefully, I think we'll just drive up to it then. I bet. Oh, the barrier is open. I'll give you this quick. <laughs> quick, quick. So, we're just emptying the grey waste because uh, we've it's been a while since we've done that. So there's a spot for that and also we've just paid for electricity as well. So it's um, it was eight cents for an hour of 10 amps of electricity. So we've just done 12 hours. So yeah, less than a euro. It's pretty, pretty damn good really. Um, yeah, not bad at all. As you can probably tell, I had a bit of a shower, had an outdoor shower. <laughs> We're just watching, there's like four campers now lined up waiting to come in here and everyone's trying to work out how to use the machine, <laughs> which is always entertaining. <laughs> and also somehow, I don't even know how this happened, we've acquired a child's Paw Patrol bike. He just came and said and hola abandoned. and left it with us, so. I don't think we're gonna keep it. Chef Sean. We're having some gnocchi with some sauce and some veg as well. So we've got two pans on the go. First time we're using the Ridge Monkey, what's it called? Don't Connect. Know. It's a big one. Connect multi-purpose pan and griddle set. So it's another it's another kind of pan, but obviously a deep one. And it also separates so you have a pan and um, like a yeah, a grill. So yeah. See what this is like, first time we've used it. Uh, we paid nine euros 50, I think it was, or nine euros for 24 hours here, and one euro for electricity for 12 hours, which is ridiculous, less than one euro actually. And we're right by a marina. Bentley's been out on the beach. He's had a fantastic time on the beach. Uh, got drenched, got covered in sand, did lots of rolling about, which he enjoyed. And he's just chilling out, he's had his dinner, and we're gonna have ours.
Well, we made it to a campsite uh, just outside of Tavira in Portugal and um, it's sort of a campsite. We, we haven't stayed at many campsites, so it might just be like an air that you pay for, but it does have facilities which makes me think it is a campsite. So we haven't decided if we're going to stay for one night or two here yet. Um, they've got like showers and um, laundry facilities and we're just going to like clean the bedding and stuff. Although it closed just as we arrived. So Sean's actually gone into town on his own to do the um, just the bedding laundry. We'll do the rest of it tomorrow and uh, I think he's going to pick up a pizza and bring that back for us as well so me and Bentley have just been chilling in the van we've gone for a little wander around the campsite um, and it's nice because the sun's just setting now so just catching the last of the sun and then um, yeah hopefully the pizza will arrive but yeah it seems really quiet everyone seems really nice lots of different nationalities always like that but yeah it's nice here and Bentley's, um, Bentley's very settled so I'm on a bit of a mission to head into Tarifa, I think it's kind of pronounced, um, which is a local town which we're right next to in the hope that I can um, find a laundrette. I think there's one about 20 minute walk away, but obviously I'm going to have to wait around for it uh, to be done, but I am not putting the bedding back on to then take it off again. <laughs> I want it, I want clean bedding tonight. Let's see how we get on. Car wash. I think that's high enough for uh, for me to to get under there. I have to remember that for tomorrow because the van is looking pretty filthy. Right, I think the laundromat is just over that bridge over there, and then right. Hopefully, if Google Maps isn't lying. Defender. Let's get across the other side to have a look. Very pretty. Google Maps said it'd be about a 25 minute walk and I was like, nah, nah, not if a normal person's walking. Oh no, it's right, it's about 25 minutes. And I still not found it. Oh, nice day for it though. That's the main thing, isn't it? I'm loving that. That is cool. Six rally, I think. Right, I managed to get that done. Um, I've got 40 minutes to kill. Thankfully, I brought something essential with me. So I'm just going to go and find a, uh, a bench to sit on and yeah, chill out. Just found this like old pavilion. Looks like an old market hall. Well, it's probably a current market hall, who knows? Come on, three minutes, three minutes to go. Right, well, job done. I have probably spent about 40 minutes whilst they're washing, and only about 20 minutes whilst they're drying, so about two pints and a pint, something like that. <laughs> no, I'm joking, I'm not that irresponsible. Right, now I've got to walk back. Look, wish me luck. So on the walk back, I've just walked past the place that uh, where I said I could wash the van on the way out. And I've just looked at it again, and there's a bloody um, laundromat there, an outside one. So I could have 
saved my journey by about, oh, I probably could have done about 20% of the journey I have done. Oh, I cannot believe that. I even filmed it. Look, I even filmed it. Anyway, I'm going into the shopping centre now to try and find some food. What an idiot. Well, pizzas are ordered, so hopefully, <laughs> once I got the food, ah, oh, I could have done this so much quicker if I'd known that laundrette was there. What a fool. Oh well, oh well, you live and learn. Pizza will make it all better though. Well, I'm happy again now, because I've now found out that pizza box bags exist. Never knew that these existed. Check this out. Finally made it back in the darkness. What an adventure that was. <laughs> anyway, time to eat some pizza. <laughs> let me in, let me in. <laughs> I have pizza. Hey. <laughs> what an expedition. Hey. Hiya, baby. Oh, yeah. You have fun. There's the washing. Oh, aren't you good? <laughs> washing and pizza. Right. <sighs> Finally. Bentley starts his day by going to the most amazing shopping centre that even allows him to bring us humans in. We grab ourselves a delicious lunch and then set off to do a spot of retail therapy. arrived at the most incredible location and I think it's a very cheers worthy event. What on earth is that you're drinking? I don't know. It's lovely though. You get these in like sushi bars. I really like them. I'm just drinking. Cheers. San Miguel. Cheers. <laughs> you need so, to see this view. Gone. Show us. Gone. Thankfully, we have lots of friends who live in uh, vans, camper vans, and all sorts of vehicles, and they're able to show us and uh, send us links to the most amazing places. So, our good, uh, our good friends Theo and B from the Indie Projects sent us this location, and it is stunning, absolutely stunning. Thank you very much. way to celebrate being in Portugal is by the Portuguese speciality, the nata. Nata. Oh, these are amazing. Originating in Lisbon, supposedly. Oh, Bentley's very excited by these as well. We've got oh, lots oh, of them. Get off it. Get off it. 
Oh, they're like a, I think like a custardy, caramelly kind of thing. Thank you. I would have laughed if you dropped that and Bentley had eaten it. <laughs> you know, he just dropped the camera straight down. <laughs> oh, they're so good. There's more chance of me dropping the camera than dropping this. <laughs> that is amazing. They're like custardy, pastry -y. Oh, they're just brilliant. Mm. Well, you wanted to see this place when it's looking lived in. It's looking lived in right now, thanks to the fact that we've got like loads of our laundry out hanging. We did get it dry earlier, but we only went for like a 15 minute dry. So uh, yeah, it had a little bit of a way to go. So there's stuff like hanging up everywhere and all our shopping bags on the bed as well. I will tidy up and at some point we will do a um, proper tour and really talk about things we like and things we don't like in the van as well. So it'll be a proper review. Um, but yeah, for the time being, this is it lived in. Well, it is my turn to cook tonight and we're going to have these veggie curry Hindu style little pots which will go in a pan. I need to do some rice and of course I've got no way of measure measuring rice so I've absolutely no idea how much I'm going to make or even how long it takes because it's all in a completely different language. So uh, wish me luck but I've got a beautiful view to work with here so there's that. So it's one kilogram and it says one portion 100 grams so there's two of us so 200 grams each so i reckon like <laughs> so you get it into fists maybe you can have the smaller portion <laughs> when you get this wrong oh, it's going to go horribly wrong it looks like way too much i can never tell with rice better to do too much than too little i suppose isn't it what do we reckon well, i don't know I don't know, we'll see what turns out. So as Lizzie cooks us up a nice meal for tonight, I'm actually just sat enjoying this incredible view. It's just, I know we keep going on about it, but it's just the most perfect location. A few camper vans here. I can see three that way and yeah a couple that way there's a big overlander that's about but yeah everyone's sort of keeping themselves to themselves and it's just very relaxing it's really nice that portugal allows um people in vans to do that kind of thing it's it's great and what is fantastic is compared to the place in spain that we went to that was that lake area this is really really cool because it's people have looked after it there's there's no rubbish anywhere everyone has taken the rubbish away and it's just been kept really really immaculate which is how it should be we need to respect these places so that the uh, local authorities allow us to keep coming to these incredible locations so very very nice do you care more about the sunset or the dinner probably the dinner is it Oi, talking to you. Clearly, the dinner. There's some stains on your photo. They all cracks on your rusty frame. Stuck in the mud. Oh. 
are leaving the van. Uh, there's a little bar just down the way, really not that far away from here, from where we've parked up, that we're just gonna go and have some lunch at. This is really such a good location. It's like shrimp sauce on a big steak. Well, dinner at that restaurant was delicious. We had, um, yeah, sea, well, like a shrimp sauce steak. A bit like a surf and turf back home, but it was very nice. But in the past sort of hour or so, it's just got so warm. It's like the, the cool breeze has stopped and it's all of a sudden a very, very warm breeze. So yeah, Love we're gonna, we're heading back to the van now and we're just gonna go and chill out in the shade probably. Certainly get uh, Bentley some shade as well. But yeah, very nice meal. You can just see the van. Uh, just there. woken up this morning to quite thick sea fog. I had a quick look out the window this morning and it looks so eerie and it still looks eerie. You can't really see the bottom of the cliffs very easily, which is a bit creepy, but we're moving on today anyway, but thankfully we stayed here when the weather was absolutely fantastic. So maybe it'll burn off later on today, I'm not sure, but it's already about half nine and it's still not gone anywhere yet. So. Yeah, we are moving on. We're heading a bit further north today. Going to try and get beyond Lisbon. Um, and we're starting our journey back home now. So, yeah, we, uh, we came here at the right time, that's for sure. Well, that's the uh, end to our little paradise up here. Uh, unfortunately, the rangers have just been around and um, they're very nice. They said to us, unfortunately, we can't park here. Uh, we were leaving anyway, which is fine. Obviously, we've left no mess at all. Everything is absolutely as we found it. Um, it's a pristine area. I hope it stays like this. Um, we got two great nights out of it. But yeah, unfortunately, we've been moved on. So onwards, I think we're gonna be heading north now. that be why everyone parks in this car park. Uh, it sounds like you can park in this car park. Um, it sounds like the rangers were pointing this out to our neighbours um, to say that they can come down here. So it sounds like you can stay in this car park that's just down the way, um, but obviously not on top of the cliff tops. Um, but say like half a kilometre. Yeah, it's, it's not, not far, far at all. So. And it's right next to the beach, which is nice as well. So there are other options if you're not willing to uh, risk it. <laughs> Sean 
John's just uh, trying to check the tide times on his phone, see whether we're going to drown or not. What do you reckon? <laughs> well, I'm just looking at the tide times. I, I, it, it's definitely tidal, but <laughs> no, I don't think it comes up this high. But the watermarks don't look that far away. That's what scares me a bit. <laughs> anyway, where are we, Sean? We're by a river by the side of Porto. Um, northern Portugal really, well getting towards the north of Portugal. We tried to go to a paid like air. It's quite expensive actually looking online on part for night but when we got there it was shut anyway. Um, I pressed a little buzz he said no we're closed so. Also we when we looked there. on part for night it said dogs were allowed but the sign had a mm. big cross through a dog so. Yeah so we came nearby it's only like 10 minutes away and we're yeah, down by the river, which very different to what I was expecting, to be honest, but um, at the minute it actually looks all right. Supposedly a few fishermen come by here in the morning, but they're all very friendly, supposedly, so. Uh, I mean, we're not staying long, are we? We're just going to... Yeah, and hopefully they walk here, they don't come here by boat, because <laughs> <laughs> the tide's coming too far. <laughs> I mean, you can see the water line there. It doesn't come up anywhere near this high. We're parked bit further away. I'm sure we'll be fine. Same as last words, eh? Well, it would appear the fog is following us. <laughs> so we're right in the centre of Porto here and I was hoping to show you this awesome like river location. Again, another part for night location, but it's really foggy. It was quite scary last night because I had a quick look at as high tide was approaching just to make sure that it wasn't coming up too high and it did come up pretty high. It did get quite close to the, the van, but um, obviously that's why I checked to make sure that I didn't have to move it and it is okay. But <laughs> yeah, if you do come to this location, uh, make sure you're careful where you park and just avoid because it, it's a high spring tide at the minute, just avoid your van being swept away. Yeah. So we're going to head off now, nice and early, try and beat some of the Porto rush hour traffic. Some of these places to stay are quite interesting. They're just like in the middle of nowhere. And it'll say services, you just turn off the motorways, which are completely dead anyway. And you're in this like real quiet place, but often they're massive hotels, like absolutely enormous. So they're like staging posts or something. And God knows why they're so big and whether they actually fill them or not. But um, we are carrying on. Got about another hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes, something like that, until we get to our destination. So onwards and upwards. to you we spent a little bit too much time in southern Portugal so as a result we're having to do a lot of driving to get back home uh, well back to Calais in time for our crossing we've also got another deadline obviously traveling with a dog means that you have to have a worming tablet well I don't he does before um, it has to be at, at least 48 hours before we travel now it's booked for Monday, Monday morning is kind of the latest we could do it really. Um, but yeah, as a result, we're having to do some hefty drives, which is quite tiring. Uh, ideally, we what we should have done is we should have started heading back a little bit earlier maybe. It just means that we are arriving at some of these beautiful airs. Well, this, is, this is pretty nice, this one. This is a lovely quiet town. Um, yeah, we're arriving at these airs that a little bit late in the day and we're not getting to explore a huge amount of the local area, unfortunately. That's the sacrifice you make for sort of spending a bit more time right down the south coast. It's definitely cooler here. But anyway, let me show you this air. So there's space for about seven campers and they're all 
there's a little uh, marker between them all so you do have sort of designated parking as seems to be the case quite often you can end up on your own certainly um, in these quieter locations like this which is quite nice right next to us we've got somewhere where you can empty the grey waste there's also a fresh water fill up and uh, somewhere to empty the toilet as well which is useful and then opposite us like you can see we've got this big kind of gravelly pathway we've got a couple of picnic benches and a bit of a grassy area as well it probably needs no reminder as well but this is all completely free you know this is fantastic we need this in the uk the only problem is i just feel it would get abused in the uk now this morning we were in porto and um <laughs> right in the heart of the city it turned out really foggy when we woke up and we uh, yeah we traveled all the way across to wherever we are now somewhere in spain um and the scenery just changed so much so starting off in porto and the surrounding area it was really built up very urbanized and then um we started climbing climbing up through the mountains and the height that we got and then back down again then the height back up again we've certainly yeah been using a lot of fuel this van is not great on fuel it's um we're getting about 25 to the gallon uh 27 at best <laughs> dog's barking at me i know he's barking the other way uh 27 at best and on those hills we sometimes it was down at 21 uh, it's four motion it's a big heavy vehicle so i mean probably can't expect much more but thankfully the fuel in spain is nice and cheap but yeah so we headed up over the mountains as we got closer to this air it just ended up really flat and really agricultural so yeah we've seen all sorts of terrain uh today and we've probably done about four hours of driving so maybe more maybe four and a half but yeah it's quite an interesting uh, change in uh, scenery definitely anyway let's see what they're up to what are you making? <laughs> Just sandwiches tonight. Oh, ugh, the door's shut on me. Too much driving to actually do any oh, proper cooking. Eating. He's got a little bit of bread. Oh dear. <laughs> oh, baguette. Nice. Nice. What are we having in them? Whatever you want that we've got. <laughs> I'm sure we'll find something. There's cheese. Come on. Outfit of choice this evening. Can't help the fact that we've come from warmer climate. You can't see your legs. <laughs> you're getting tangled up. Look, you're getting tangled up. <laughs> he likes to do a bit of rolling after travelling, doesn't he? Yeah, I think um, right down in the southern hotter regions, it's harder to find some nice rollable grass. <laughs> but now it's easy to find it. He's pretty happy with him, sir. So. The air is just behind there. There's no one around at all. It's like a ghost town. It's just around the corner. You've got plenty of grass if you need to walk your dog. So we just stopped um, about as close to the border with France as we can get really because fuel is a lot cheaper in Spain than it is in France. So it's worth topping up um, even if you only need to put a bit in. We've probably got about just under half a tank of fuel left so um, yeah we're having a spot of lunch and uh, yeah filling up the tank so that we've got a full tank to get north of Bordeaux hopefully. So as I said yesterday, 
because we spent too much time in Portugal, we've had to do a lot of traveling. And today has been probably the biggest journey, actually six hours on the road, which doesn't sound like much, but well, it doesn't sound like a huge amount. It is a lot, obviously. But uh, when you've done like four and a half hours the day before and four hours before that and stuff, yeah, it's, <laughs> we really should have set up a bit earlier. But we are not far from Le Mans, which is where the vets is that we've booked Bentley in to have his worming um, tablet. And so yeah, tomorrow we've got plenty of time to do that uh, tomorrow. And we have the appointment on Monday, which is the following day, uh, nine in the morning. So, but this air is beautiful, right in the middle of nowhere. And yeah, it looks lovely. Bentley keeps trying to jump it, he's in the water. But yeah, look at that. So you've got this lake and then the van is just over there. We've got a neighbor, but yeah, it's lovely. There's a little town nearby actually, but yeah. We've not explored it yet. Looks lovely. And again, completely free. Something keeps scaring him. Come on, you. I think it's just sticks. I don't think they're Yeah, is it just that bit there? Yeah. Do you think it's going to So, post swim, I've actually given him a proper wash can I? And one thing we brought with us um, that Gizo very kindly gave us is this amazing, like, microfiber towel for driving uh, drying dogs and you can see it's got loads and loads and loads of things on it so it's really small but it really dries them off and he loves it don't you you love it because you get to get your face done <laughs> but yeah we'll put a link in the description to them um because they're they're a great small business um brilliant for camper vans they go to like loads of shows as well and lovelier people you will not find so uh check them out <laughs> So I risked my life earlier on a Saturday afternoon going to a car four in France in Bordeaux. It was busy and scary, but I was desperate for a curry. Can't explain why. So I've got a mug of Sean's face. <laughs> Actually, I've got half a mug hang of on, Sean's face. Yeah. <laughs> Look, if you did your hair like in a quiff again, You've been wearing it down a lot recently. Oh, hang on, it's going the other way, isn't it? Whoops. Uh, oh. What do you think? Is it similar? I think it's similar. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I've got half a mug of Sean's face of rice. I know I made a horrible mistake the other day. You didn't see on camera because we didn't show you, but when I made the rice, it ended up really wet and I poured accidentally pretty much the entire contents into the sink. So that still wasn't still nice. ate it. Still ate it. <laughs> mm. Mm, sink rice. <laughs> so I picked out the bits that we could get away with and then like reheated it a little bit. But anyway, so I've got half a cup of rice. I'm going to try with like, I think it's like half a cup of rice, half a cup of water, or it's like half a cup of rice, one cup of water. Oh God. Well, I don't know. Just put loads of water in. It's yeah, I'll, I'll try it again. But anyway, I've got half a head of rice. Half a head. <laughs> Bentley's intrigued. Well, I can't get all the rice out of your head. Oh, well, there we go. Thanks for that. I think after six hours of driving, we've just lost it. This is the exciting new ridge monkey being used to do a curry in. I think it's brilliant. It's so big. You can put all that in there. Yeah, it says it's for two people. Oh, okay. So I've warmed the fake naan breads pita bread on the top <laughs> they're all done you warm them on top of the ridge look at that Ooh. and then the lid can come off there we go <laughs> the rice worked by the way the half a cup of rice to a cup of water worked very nicely
We're just having a quick wander into the town called Clerac. Oh, I hope I said that right. Uh, just to, I know there's some uh, supermarkets open or like little shops. And uh, because we stayed in the air here, it only seems right that we support these small businesses here. So we're going to just nip in and hopefully get some fresh bread. These look such good croissants. Proper, proper croissants. Oh, they from. are very good. Very, from the boulangerie. Good. Yeah, everyone they here were, is so friendly. They were really friendly because I spoke in French and they were all saying, they knew straight away that I was English, but they were saying, oh, your accent's good, you know. <laughs> it, it wasn't, but it's nice. It's nice that they say that. I think that's great. They're so lovely here. Right, shall I take pooch? Yeah. Seems I've got the bread. These are the best croissants ever. Mm. Oh, it's worth coming to Cleric just for the croissants. Wow. Oh, that is very good. Mm -mm -mm. Here we see the humble train spotter in his natural environment. So the sat nav took us this way, um, but the road sense a dead end. So this line must be fairly new, or Google Maps is just never updated. But it's this is the main line between Paris and Bordeaux, TGV trains, and I suppose they go about 320 kilometers an hour past here, which would be incredible to watch. But it's a um, Sunday. And I think Lizzie tried to check and it looks like there's 20, at least 20 trains or an average of 20 trains a day. So chance of us actually seeing one without waiting for a long, long time. We haven't really got the time to do that. It's quite slim, but I keep hearing noises. I'm like, <laughs> you know, for a fact, as soon as we drive away, one will race past. We might not even see it. 320 kilometers an hour is really fast. It's pretty fast. What's that in miles per hour? I'm going like, to guess 250 mile an hour. Yeah, probably is about that. Shall I have a look? See if I'm right. Can do. Hang on. Hey Siri. What speed is 320 kilometers an hour in miles per hour? 320 oh. kilometers per hour is 198.84 what? miles per hour. That's not very fast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you'd have thought they'd just go that little bit faster to get 200. I know they can go a lot faster than that. They did have the record for years until the bullet train, I think. Good job we've got Siri around to answer all our questions. Yes, just no trains. I'm being lazy and just staying inside. If you're wondering why I'm sat in the back, you can ask him that. Somebody's a fuss pot. Someone's a fuss pot after a box fell on him. A really light box, there was nothing yeah, in it. He did so make that sound pretty bad. Yeah, it was like a huge, <laughs> it was like a cereal box with nothing in it um, that we were just waiting to take to the recycling. It fell on him when we were traveling and that was it. He, um, we, we've had him like seat belted in and, and a barrier between us, but he was trying to break free of all his restraints. So um, he's really chilled when I'm sat in the back with him. So. We're able to get the miles on, aren't we? Yeah, I mean, so. I, what's quite nice in comparison to like the California Ocean is if you're sat in the back in the California Ocean, you're actually miles away from the driver. Whereas in this, you're quite a lot closer to them. So you can actually still chat as normal. The funniest part by far is watching Sean trying to do the payages. <laughs> Grab a ticket. <laughs> Seatbelt. Seatbelt. Lights are on green. Go, go, go! Window back up. Yes! 
<laughs> and in France, that's about every 20 miles. Bentley, you tangled me up, look. No, you're not allowed to go now. Here you go, you can have the camera back, I can't really hold it. Bentley's enjoying closing around the area. It's a lovely day though. Sure is. Whoa, Jesus, that is fast. <laughs> it sounds insane. It sounds like a from an aircraft. Ah, oh, goosebumps. That was mental. I actually thought he was going to go nuts. I thought I was going to go nuts. I, that was really funny because I was literally just looking up train times, wasn't I? I was like, get the camera, get the and camera. And I, I found a train that should have approximately been here around now. And I was like, could it be? And then you were like, get the camera, it's coming. That was crazy. That was mental. That was the other one though. That was, um, that was, that from was going the other way. Paris to Bordeaux, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is fast. You need to watch that back. <laughs> You need to watch that back, that was rapid. <laughs> Sean also bought us a very nice surprise at the bakery earlier. Look at them two. I think one's like a Ferrero Rocher type and I think the other one is a Panettone? No. No, it begins with the same letter. Panacotta? Pavlova. Pavlova. Mm. Yeah, we're going to halve them so we each try both. We which just... isn't what Sean usually does. He usually no. forces me to have one and he has the other. And he doesn't taste the other one, just in case he's made the wrong wrong decision. But I usually try and steal some of his. Whatever. So we just stopped um, right by the side of one of the roads that we're taking up to Le Mans. This road up to Le Mans is... Uh, if your vehicle is over three and a half tons, you're restricted to 80 kilometers per hour, which it's quite slow going for us. Obviously, the, the time on the sat nav as well thinks is expecting us to be going faster, so it keeps going up out at what time we're going to arrive at the destination. However, we decide to stop just at the end of this road that you're on. It's the N10, I think it is, and you're on it for well, about 160 kilometers, 170 kilometers, so quite a long way. But um, well, a couple of things. One, it's Sunday, so all the lorries are stopped on the side of the road. Uh, well, nearly all the lorries. So this is why we decided to stop here, uh, just because I think all the airs will be quite full on the main roads. It's quite, it's quite a nice little location. It's just quite weirdly by some water pumping station thing, but yeah, nice and quiet. Um, also, because we've been doing 80 kilometers per hour, the fuel economy on the van has been so much better. You definitely need to, if, if you've got one of these four motion ones, it does pay to drive quite a bit slower. Um, yeah, you, if you are on a normal unrestricted motorway in France, you can actually do 110 with a, a motor that's over three and a half tons, 110 kilometers per hour. But yeah, if you do about 90-ish, you get much better fuel economy. You're talking 35 miles per gallon rather than 25 so yeah got to weigh that up but lizzie has divided the cakes Look, up I've now made them into half and half i like it half and half and even each of us has even got the little the little flag which is it, it's the bakery name i think yeah it's awesome and the telephone number is so cute right i need to eat There's something very satisfying about getting it in one over the grate for the wastewater without having to move the van again. Some of the real posh ones have cameras uh, for the waste nozzle so you know exactly where you're parking it. That's crazy. So, not a bad spot. As you can see, we're the only ones here. Uh, we're about 50 kilometres north of Le Mans and we... Um, we were we had to drive the a part of the circuit so we, we had a quick look on google maps to see where we were in relation to the circuit de la sarf which is the huge 24-hour le mans circuit and you can actually they actually use parts of the public road for that circuit so the Mulsanne Strait is part of it so we drove down there turned around came back again but yeah that was quite cool so we've got to get up pretty early the vet's appointment is at 9 a.m uh ben's got to have his worming tablet 
and you've got to have that at least I might have said before 48 hours before you travel but it's actually 24 hours before you travel between 24 hours and five days before you um, before you travel back home so we'll have that and then we shall spend a bit of time sort of I don't know meandering back towards Calais spend another night and then yeah get the Euro tunnel back yeah not bad spot at all is it fairly quite the, there's the odd car oh another motorhome's just arrived who'd have thought what are the chances oh oh they're back they're back are we all good we're all good look they even got a little certificate oh did you guys do the certificate sanitary international pool of transit let animal de <gasps> compact me oh. it was really funny actually um they didn't speak a lot of english and i don't speak any french uh, but yeah what was really funny was the table that they do the um like inspection so they check that your dog is healthy to travel as well um but the table like is like a mechanical lift thing so he gets dog. on it and it goes and Bentley was like <laughs> what is this magic <laughs> he was so confused by it and Baby, he, the funniest part was when he jumped off it at the end when it went back down again it was like Oh dear. And he did the clumsiest, I mean it was so close, it was like this far off the ground, so he just could have walked off it, but he did this really weird like leap thing that sort of fell off it, and really clumsy. It's all been dated correctly and everything. Yeah, like I did it. double check that as well, because sometimes one thing to look out for is um, sometimes they put the date the wrong way around. Uh, I mean yeah. it's the 16th of March at the moment, so if they put it the wrong way around it would be fairly obvious. But if it's obviously between 1 and 12, if they put the dates the wrong way around it can look really bad. So. But um, we've also got a um, actual certificate this time, which I've never had before. So that also confirms it um, without just having it in the European pet passport. So yeah, they were really thorough, really thorough. And that was this vet's here, Clinique. Uh, well, that doesn't say the name of it, but um, it's a vet's in Alençon or Alencon, I don't know. Well, that is it. We are back where we started. We've done the full round trip um, all the way down through France, through Spain, to Gibraltar, to Portugal, and then all the way back up again. I think it was like 3,500 miles we've been. Yeah, it's now clicked over to nearly, well, 3,660 or something, and we've still got another hour to Calais. So, But we're gonna end the videos right here. Um, it's been an epic trip, hasn't oh, it? It's been amazing. Definitely uh, one to remember, and I really hope that you've enjoyed watching our adventure. Yeah, yeah, and the sun is out for us to finish on. Last time yeah. we were here, it was quite a bit colder, very, very windy. With the weird sand on the beach. Yeah. That was really weird. Yeah, so yeah. we're back at the same air. I don't know if you noticed, but we're back at the same air that we started at. So we arrived here last night, and yeah, it's just been an epic trip. Absolutely tons of miles and tons of scenery taken in, and it's been really, really good, hasn't it? Bentley's just rolling around on the ground with his toy <gasps> did you drop it <laughs> but it's really funny i hope you've really enjoyed the video and um we shall see you in the next videos you're snorty you are bebum <laughs> and don't forget to like and subscribe we've got plenty of content coming up as well plenty more reviews and things so we yeah. can't wait to take you on many more adventures and show you around many many more fans so until next time see cheers you soon. thank you bye